Hi guys, today I'm going to go over how to set up VMware Virtual Center Server. So this is a great product to manage all your hypervisors. So if you're running the VMware ESXi or VMware ESX vSphere hypervisor, this will allow you to take all those hypervisors and manage it from a single location. And when you're able to do that, you're actually able to maybe move your VMs between hypervisors with zero time time if you have some kind of shared storage like a SAN or a NAS or even NFS will work. So just keep watching. I'll show you guys how to set up uh, VMware vSphere. I'm sorry, how to set up VMware Virtual Center Server. And it's really easy setup. You go ahead and run this in a Windows environment. And actually, honestly, you can run it in a VM on one of your hypervisors in your existing uh, virtualization environment. So you don't have to buy a brand new physical server to actually run this. So just keep watching, and I'll show you guys how easy it is to set this up. I'm starting out with a Windows Server installation, Windows Server 2012, clean install. And I'm going to make sure it's fully patched before I continue. The first thing I'm going to do is going to go to the VMware website, VMware.com. I'm going to click on My Product. You go ahead and register here. It's free to register. And we're going to go ahead and download a trial edition of uh, VMware vSphere Virtual Center Server. So this is part of their vSphere package. It's used for management purposes. So this is a great tool for managing our ESXX, ESXi servers. So we're going to go ahead and navigate through our download options. After you register, it says download now. Then we'll download the trial edition. So I believe this will give us 60 days, I believe, to download uh, and install and run it and test it out. I really like this product. I've been using it for a long time. So you get a few options here to download. You can download a uh, Microsoft software installation file or an ISO. I usually like downloading the ISO. So I'm going to select manual download. It is a fairly uh, large file, so it'll just take a few minutes to download. Once it's downloaded, we're going to go ahead and start our installation. Again, you want to make sure it's fully patched before you continue here because if your system is not fully patched, you will encounter errors during the installation. So I'm just checking here to make sure all my patches have been installed, they're kind of current. So then I'm going to go ahead and go down to find my install, my download ISO. And I want to go ahead and mount it. So I'm looking at my downloads folder. If you right click on it, you have the option to just mount it on Windows Server 2012. And then you're able to access the files as if it was a CD drive. Very easy. I'm going to do the auto run. Just double click on that and it's going to start the installation. The installation process will ask you a few key questions. So some things you should have in advance is a full DNS entry for the host. You should have a static IP address on this Windows Server. You should have a uh, fully qualified domain name that will resolve. Those two things are required to actually do a successful install. So I can go ahead and read here what uh, Virtual Center Server is and any prerequisite software. I'm going to go ahead and select Install. And it's just going to take a second, and then it's going to ask us some basic questions about um, databases and accepting the licensing, all the standard stuff. So it's just going through here. You're going to click Next, accept the license, pretty standard stuff so far. Here, this is the first part that's interesting. If this is your first VMware server, select the embedded deployment. This is for your single sign-in login and licensing information. If you have a more advanced setup, you could select, go on and select the second option. But if you're starting out, the default option is the option you want. Now we're going to select our assistant name. Now this is what I'm saying. You need to have your fully qualified domain name, and it has, should resolve. And it does support IPv6 and IPv4 um, DNS. So you want to make sure all that is resolved and working correctly. If you don't and restart the system, you will notice your VMware Virtual Center server services will not start. So go ahead and make sure your DNS is set up properly first. So now we're going to set up the single sign-in login domain. So if you have existing virtual center servers that you have some sort of virtual center server single sign-in login domain already configured, you could join that. But if you don't and this is your brand new system, go ahead and set it up here and use it. I usually use the default option vSphere.local and then I set a, the username as administrator, and then I set an admin password. After I do the installation and the installation is done, then I can go ahead and connect it into our local domain that the business is using. So you're the one that you actually have configured with domain admin in your environment, and they can configure which users have what access um, to the VMware Virtual Center server 
and what parts they have access to, which domain users. So that's really actually a great feature. So after that, we're going to go ahead and set up how you want the services to run. Usually there's the local administrator account that services run as. I usually use the default local system account. You could change that if you want. I really never saw a reason to. Then if you have um, some sort of database you want to store your virtual center server information in, you can go ahead and point it to that, provide the DS DNS name, you know, domain, domain, <laughs> database name, username and password, and go ahead and connect to that. Otherwise, it's going to install a Pro Postgres database on your Windows server. I go with the local installation. Again, if this is your first environment, go with the local database and it'll make it easier and it's all configured for you. Now it's going to show you what ports have to be opened up and configured to run Virtual Center Server. You see the number of ports both for connecting to the ESXi and as well as for the system administrators to connect to. So again, you'll be connecting to port 80 and 443 for administrative purposes, but for ESXi. And it's going to show you what path you can go ahead and install on. And once it's installed, you go ahead and hit next. You can change the system path. You can choose to join and provide feedback to VMware or not provide feedback. It's up to you. It's to improve the product, of course, with VMware. And once it does that, it gives you a summary here. And some things to remember again is the single sign-in login domain, the single sign-in login domain user and password. That's the very first thing we're going to use to uh, log into our web interface for Virtual Center Server. It does take a few minutes for the installation to finish. Once it's done, you can go ahead and click Launch vSphere Web Client here. It'll launch in whichever browser is your default browser. I usually like using Chrome, so I just go ahead and open up Chrome. You go ahead and type in your host name, your local host. You can either type in local host or your fully qualified domain name. Um, I don't have a signed certificate, so you will come up with an error if you also do not install a um, signed certificate here. So I'm going to go ahead and click log in. So gonna, this is going to go log into the web interface. Now, once we do that, this is where we use that domain name, vSphere.local, and then administrator, and then the admin password you set. Um, once it logs you in, it's going to give you a bunch of options for all sorts of great functionality. I don't have enough time right now to make a video on all the functionality. It does have quite a bit. So in the future, maybe I'll try to do different topics here. But there's tons of functionality, so I'm just going to go through and just help you get started creating a um, data center and add a host. So there's a few things you can you just browse through here. Let's look at the event logs, the console, the different hosts. But really the first thing you're going to do when you install a virtual center server is go ahead and create a data center. And once you create a data center, it's a way of organizing your ESXX servers. So if you have multiple ESX or vSphere ESXi servers, you can go ahead and sort it by data center. So I'm just going to add one data center here. I'm just going to call it um, C Center, C Data Center, I'm sorry. And you can do it by geographical region. I've seen some companies do that or location name or city name, depending how spread out your company is. And now I'm going to go ahead and add a ESXi or ESX um, hypervisor to my data center. So the next thing is add host. That host is your hypervisor host. If you kind of read it through here, it kind of will guide you. It really does a great job of documentation. It will guide you through the next step. So again, I'm going to go to that pull down menu, click on a host. I'm going to click on add and add a new host. Um, sometimes you might want to make sure the networking works. You want to make sure sometimes I will ping it ping the IP address of the host just to make sure that I'm, I have connectivity to that IP address. Again, you might want to make sure um, there's no ports being blocked. So if you want to make sure that you're able to access the port that's required and also on the Windows server, the installation should have opened up your firewall for you to make sure all the ports are accessible. But if you have any sort of trouble adding this, I would check to make sure that none of your ports are being blocked. So again, I'm going to go add host. I click on add host. I'm going to click on my data center that I want to add it to, C data center. And I'm going to put in the IP address or you can put in the host name. Again, you should have make sure your DNS is set up correctly if you're going to put in the host name here. And again, this, these all should be static IP addresses for best practice. So once I have the IP address in there, I hit next. You can put in the root 
password. This is the username and password on the hypervisor. So when you installed your ESXi or ESX hypervisor during that installation, it will prompt you for a root username and password. It's showing the virtual machine. So I just have one virtual machine running on that system, on that hypervisor. So again, it's going to go through some of the licensing information. I'm not going to lock it down so you can't make it accessible. So I'm going to use the, I'm going to dis disable this option, but depending on the security of your environment, you might actually want to lock down for security purposes um, who can access what. So that's what you kind of do here. Um, so after you do this, some of the cool stuff you could do with this is put it, set it up in a cluster so you could add multiple hosts and then have a cluster so you can set up some sort of high availability or fault tolerance within your ESXi, your VMware environment. So if you have one host or one ESX server go down, the other one will pick up the virtual machines and start running them seamlessly, which is a great feature in here. So maybe in the future, I'll try to talk about that some more. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys give a VMware Virtual Center server a try. It's a great management tool. I've been using it for a long time in many environments, and I find that it works really well. So just subscribe to get updates, and I'll see you guys next time.